where do we start? Where do we start? So start at the beginning, show me your original okay. finesse floating stick. So the stick, this is the, the second coming of the stick. So there we are with, um, it's basically just a, a floppy stick bait. There's nothing exciting about it, but when it sits on a Ned rig, that little waving tail in any current or uh, that's any movement, even if you're thinking you're fishing it static, you're not. It's yeah. always moving. It's so always got that little twitch. To so. people just listening to the podcast, um, a Ned rig is basically you've got like a, I would say, um, a little base of a weight. Yeah, it's a like a sticking straight Sure, up. it's like a half moon. Uh, Rather than a round ball jig, yeah. it's a half moon, so the weight is actually, naturally, it wants to sit yeah. upright. And the hook work. sticking up. And the hook sitting up. So by dragging that across the bottom. How would you hook bottom, that bait on the, uh, that Ned rig? This bait, you go straight through the centre, yeah. feed feed up and round, yeah. and the air chamber, it's all, it's all physics. Because it's closed at one end, the air doesn't escape. Yeah. Um, and what you don't want to do, you don't want to change that air chamber. So you don't I've, want to pierce it. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to pierce it. You can, and if you use a Ned, a Ned weight, it should still sit up like, but it won't all the time. Yeah. But what I did, I've actually designed it so that it takes a size four Gamakatsu EWG, yeah. or what I stock is the Gerza line of hooks, and that's a size two. But also you can go up to a size one Ned hook. So the original Ned hooks from Z-Man were on a size two. But what I've done, I've designed that solid piece there so you're not getting into the chamber and that will take a size one right. hook. Right, before you go into the chamber. Before you go into the chamber. Very clever. So everything's sort of come from, again, how are you going to fish it? How yeah. am I going to design it? Um, so that's where we went there. And just hold it up right. So people listening, I'll describe this to you. Some of you will know what we're about with Ned yeah. rig and the, the Z what was Z-Man? What, what do they... Z-Man was the TRD. Which is more bass. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fatter profile. Yeah. It's slightly smaller at 2.75 inches. Yeah. That's three inches. This uh, finesse stick, if Tom holds it up, the end, hold it up by buddy, so like you're fishing it. The end, you can see how it's moving the water. Even stationary, that's going to be moving all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, you don't have to just net it. So for me, I don't net that often. Ash Costa doesn't net it, does he? No, no, he Texas rigs it. Yeah. Um, and there's all this, there's, uh, one of the biggest things recently was, do you peg your Texas rig? So pegging just means that you stop the weight from moving. Yeah. I generally don't peg, I don't stop that weight moving on the line unless I'm fishing into snags. Because then I don't want that weight to, because when you, when you Texas rig, the weight comes down and then that will follow. Now this doesn't, this stays up. So those hooks that I mentioned, that size two or size four, that will actually, you can use that as a float. That is how buoyant it is. It sticks out. If you have it on the surface that of the water. That must work superbly on a Texas rig. Yeah. If you get the so goes dick head the right yeah. weight, you can critically balance it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So wow. the lighter you go. Yeah. And also with this, which not a lot of people do, is I fish that top water weightless. Do you really? Yeah. So that now is my walking bait on top wow so it's so versatile yeah it, just that and again people say oh yeah, it's really soft but that's i'm not messing about with that that's it's it's tough it's it's a tough old stretchy bit of plastic um there's no salt content in it and that's what keeps it tough so those baits that i really liked at first the the key techs, they're really loaded with salt and it does it it weighs it down it uh your senkos are salt but I don't put salt in because what salt also does, it weakens the bait. Right. So yeah. when I was fishing Ketex, I was losing, I was getting one fish a, a bait, but I'd rather catch a fish I've got, than yeah, have a, than yeah, have a look. Yeah, people some strike prey, yeah. and they're salt based the bottom half, yeah. and they deteriorate your tackle box. Yeah. yeah, and if you put any hooks in there with them, yeah. and they're yeah. salt. So again, with the tackle box, these because I used to love key tech, I still do, I just don't use them because I don't have to. Um, that's safe, that can that can mix with key tech, it can mix with other brands. What colour is that? Is this is the Trues. So this is, it's a lime Trues, a darker lime Trues on one side, and then almost a chartreuse 
lime shrews mix on the other. Um, so that gives you, and oh, what yeah. we were saying before about the the opacity of the lure, um, I can put glitter in there and you get a lot of depth yeah. in there. Okay, so you start off with that. What else were you making originally? Originally, wow, that's going back. Um, okay, so the next one, and I had a competition to name it, was this lure. So this was, people might say, oh, that looks like a, a, a Spro. Oh, actually, this was out eight months before Spro released theirs. So it's basically a take on a Zoom brush hook, um, but on steroids, so with extra flappy bits. Um, and basically, that's a great little Carolina bait. For anyone listening who's not into this, you kind of these are kind of creature baits. Yeah, creature baits, one hundred percent. I am kind of look like nothing something. and lots of things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, for some reason, I don't really fish that many shads. I'm not a shad guy. I'm a, I'm a creature guy, and maybe it's because they're just interesting. Yeah. Um, and when I fish a, a swim bait. I feel like I need to swim it, <laughs> so yeah. so that's it. Yeah. Whereas when I want to hit the bottom with this and I'm working it a little bit more, um, I just feel a bit more involved. Yeah, so you use a Carolina rig with that, and obviously a, Carolina, a fairly small hook. Yeah, you can also net it. Yeah, you can net it. So again, it's the same. It's a three-inch lure. So what I wanted to do was simplify my tackle box. Yeah. So my tackle box then only had one size of hook, ah, one size of jig. Yeah. And therefore, you can just go, oh, what I'm going to do? Well, I want a bit more action, I'll put that on. Clever. But again, you can, when people say to me, oh, yeah, it's, it's a, do you do a different size? It's like, well, I, I just cut that up. Yeah. I cut those first bits off, and then that goes on. And then that is a real nice mouthful for quantity of perch. Yeah. So that was the, the next lure, and that was the Kraken. That was named by uh, everyone that was on my Facebook group at the time. And I think the winner got, a lot of them <laughs> yeah just just went with a lot of them um then then we went into uh lures that don't have a lot of action so sometimes you just want a profile um let's go with a different color so this is red signal for what we have signal crayfish so i've gone for a, a, a dark green pumpkin with a bit of I black really like that, yeah, yeah a bit of black glitter um and copper in the back for the top of the top of the crayfish colour and then the red with glitter in the bottom and these beaver style baits these are sort of your um, your classic punching you, you want to go through cover so you don't want the lure to be hung up so it's a nice profile um, and you're wanting the fish to go I'll eat it yeah so you're coming in quite fast but in the UK we don't do a lot of that we don't have these big we don't have boats we don't have a lot of boats where we're yeah. gonna go and uh, flipping pitch all over the place so from the bank when I fish I always start near bank work my way around and then change things up as I need to but the nice thing about this is when it's cold water and you don't have you don't want something with a lot of action this doesn't really have it so there's no flappy bits on there as in no vibration but what you can do is you take away or you split the beaver tail so oh, that is clever. So in the water, the plastic that I use is buoyant. It doesn't. It floats without the hook. So as soon as you put a hook in it, it does sink. So we can we spoke about critically balancing. Yeah, yeah. So that float that float. If you were to fish that weightless, that would fall through the water column really slowly. Wow! I bet you get hit lots of hits on the drop. Lots yeah. of hits on the drop. Yeah. Really big hits on the drop. And using ultra fine grain with light rod and reel. Yeah. Oh, that must be nice. Yeah. 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 Xander on these. Would you... It's awesome. Carolina? Carolina that, yep. Yeah. Um, to allow yeah. it to just waft and drop? Yeah. 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 Or, and that, because it's nice and compact, you can, if you don't take it apart like I've done there, it comes through grass, it comes through weeds yeah. nice and easy. Um, and it just floats down. And again, it's just... It's a creature. I suppose but, you want an aggressive take. You need more Texas from Texas, really, just to get it right. Yeah, te Texas or Chebit. Yeah. Um, but again, the reason I like the Texas unpegged, so the free running, is that the weight hits. It comes down. Yeah. It comes down fast, and then the weight hits, and then that slowly yeah. comes down, yeah. and that's when you get you stay in contact with everything. Yeah. 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 What size hook would you use with that? This is. I know guys that work that on a three or. 
Really? I use a one up. Yeah. That's what I use on that. Um, in the like I said, in, in the Gamakatsu, a one up or one zero um, is a size for that one. Or a size one jig. Yeah. Um, but you can go two. But I know guys that use a three because they want it. That they just want to, to disguise a hook and just whale into that fish yeah. and hook set it. But they're catching tens, four or five pounders. I was going to say, they want that <laughs> stone, the plastic goes through yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, yeah. so that's that one. Um, where do we go from there? Oh, we went to another creature bait. But this one, a bit more classic looking crayfish. Yeah. Okay. So, um, anyone listening who's not into this, um, You've got to have a look at the video because this is amazing the different variations we've got here. But Tom's got what we could, what Americans would call crawfish, claws, yeah, yeah and the Claw traditional dance. crayfish. And um, obviously now in the fen drains we've got uh, the signals and we've got the Turkish crayfish. So I'd imagine these around here would be pretty awesome. I do okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do okay. Um, like I said, I, I I do fish. Sometimes the fish want a swim. They want that paddle tail. But nine times out of ten, you can also get that same action. So this, the one I'm holding up now is called a Thang. Um, again, this was named by a customer. Actually, it's named by um, Jason Vorster, who just really wanted to, a lure called a Thang. Um, and this is also a hollow one. So I have several floating lures. This is another one. Uh, and this has a hollow top to it. Um, you can either use that as the floating chamber or you can put scent in it. You can put a rattle in it. So it's it's a three mil hole, so you can get a glass rattle, put it inside. Oh, wow, that's clever. Give me that. Now, the thing with this, I hold it upside down because they're so floppy. When it does sit up, it sits up like that. So it's, it's quite a defensive, so you, get, you do get some real good aggressive takes on this because it's a yeah. very aggressive, yeah. defensive stance. Um, what can happen, is that they take the pincers first. Ah. So they come in and smash yeah. it first. They really do disarm it. With that, if you get a big hit, but no fish, you know there's a big fish in there. Straight and you just, out. you throw it back out. Yeah. You throw it back out like a, an amputee. Or yeah. you change it. Yeah. But again, I've used that as top water. So one of the, in fact, the river that's very close to us right now, <laughs> mm -hmm. when you see the perch bust on the surface, that, flaps on the surface that is a good idea. and it floats yeah so again and it's quite heavy it's 2.75 grams so on standard spinning gear you're going to throw that yes. quite easily yeah. uh, even on uh, i like my bait casters and i have a bfs stuff that's still a heavy lure it yeah. might even be three i, I haven't got the, the stats and but... with that could with, with the boy chamber yeah how would you rig it what's your favorite way of rigging it gave me that that's, that's a really good ned bait right that's a really good ned bait but again, where I fish and but you know I fish, it's snaggy as hell. Yeah. So I would you can cheb that, put that on a cherub, cherub put it on a cheb rig and you're away. But the, the the nice thing about the cheb is that you can either use an EWG for weedless or you can get a worm hook uh, or a, a straight shank and have it as a as a net. Because it's so buoyant, no matter where that cheb is, it's gonna pop up. Yeah. The only reason I don't really cheb is because I got schooled one day fishing fangs on the Thames. Um, same weight, mine was a five gram cheb and Jason's was a five gram Texas. Same places, same spots, same boat. And I just got schooled because the cheb was actually taking the weight or the lure into the debris on the bottom. Yeah. Whereas the Texas was allowing it to yeah. come down yeah. and he was getting smashed on the drop, on the pause, whereas I was, I did catch, but I didn't catch many. And that's where I sort of looked at it and went, take that on board. <laughs> yeah, it's about on the day, trying to On the day, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Whereas on other days, the Cheb, cheb yeah. works, and on a hard bottom, yeah, all day long on the Cheb. There'll be some people listening to this going, what, what are is a Cheb? <laughs> what are they on about? Yeah, and absolutely. what we'll do, um, get some material out of the next couple of weeks just explaining very basically the difference between these rigs how to yeah. rig them not to use um, I've already got the knots done on the Facebook page but um, YouTube page but we'll get this sorted and we'll use Tom's lures to explain exactly 
how to rig them, which ones to rig, and how to fish them. How to fish them, how yeah. Fish them. And, uh, my little plan is to actually just go out locally and not try and catch any monsters and just let's just get just catch fish. Just catch fish. Just catch fish. If there's big ones, they'll come along. Exactly. If they're not, yeah. hey, what's that?